Northern Europe finds itself at a pivotal juncture in the evolution of modern artillery. After decades in which armies in the region emphasized small-scale peacekeeping operations, light expeditionary missions, and limited territorial defense, the brutal conflict in Ukraine has underscored a fundamental truth, heavy firepower remains the cornerstone of contemporary land warfare. The war has reminded northern European nations that no amount of light infantry or mechanized units can substitute for robust, survivable, and mobile artillery capable of delivering precise, long-range support. For countries such as Norway, Finland, Sweden, and Denmark, the question of how to modernize their artillery forces has become urgent, not just technically but strategically, politically, and logistically. The debate over which systems to acquire and deploy, whether tracked or wheeled, has emerged as a defining issue for military planners in the region, influencing decisions about defense industry partnerships, operational doctrine, and even NATO interoperability. At the center of this modernization effort are two self-propelled artillery systems that exemplify starkly different design philosophies, the K-9 Thunder from South Korea and Sweden's Archer system. Both are equipped with 155mm guns and promise the ability to deliver accurate, long-range fire support, yet their approaches to mobility, survivability, and battlefield philosophy could not be more different. The K-9 Thunder represents a traditional, heavily armored, tracked approach designed to survive under fire and operate in extreme terrain, while the Archer embodies a new school of artillery thought, emphasizing speed, automation, and operational flexibility over raw protection. Understanding these systems' implications requires examining not only their technical attributes but also the geography, climate, logistics, and strategic environment of Northern Europe, a region characterized by both Arctic tundra and densely networked southern territories. The first major driver shaping artillery decisions in Northern Europe is the operational experience drawn from the war in Ukraine. Russian forces have relied heavily on a vast arsenal of tube artillery, multiple rocket launchers, and long-range missiles, devastating Ukrainian units and urban centers alike. Counter-battery engagements, where radars detect incoming fire and respond within minutes, have become routine, highlighting the deadly importance of mobility and survivability. NATO members in the North quickly realized that without artillery capable of rapid deployment, long-range precision, and resilient protection, their ground forces could be exposed to catastrophic losses. Moreover, the urgency was compounded by the immediate contribution of existing artillery to Ukraine's defense. Denmark, Sweden, and Norway dispatched systems like the Caesar, Archers, and older M109 units to Kiev, leaving temporary gaps in their own inventories. These transfers accelerated procurement programs, prompting Norway and Finland to double down on K-9 acquisitions while Sweden expanded Archer production to replace donated units. In essence, the war created a rare convergence of necessity and opportunity, forcing northern European armies to modernize their artillery fleets with renewed speed and strategic clarity. Geography, however, imposes an equally significant set of constraints and opportunities. Northern Europe is far from a uniform battlefield. Norway and Finland, particularly in the north and along their Arctic frontiers, confront vast expanses of tundra, snow-covered forests, and mountainous terrain, often with limited road infrastructure. In contrast, southern Sweden and Denmark feature dense road networks, extensive coastal lines, and direct access to the Baltic Sea, favoring rapid maneuver along existing infrastructure. This geographic dichotomy feeds directly into the debate between tracked and wheeled artillery. The K-9 Thunder, with its tracked chassis and 47-ton weight, is built to handle extreme off-road conditions, snow, ice, and mud, enabling it to operate where wheeled vehicles would be immobilized. Its armor provides protection against shrapnel, small arms fire, and other battlefield hazards, while its integration with the K-10 resupply system allows sustained, high-speed firing under protective cover. 
These capabilities make it particularly well suited for Finland and Norway, where the harsh Arctic environment could render less robust systems ineffective or even dangerously exposed. The Archer system, on the other hand, prioritizes speed and operational efficiency. Mounted on an 8x8 wheel truck chassis, it sacrifices heavy armor and extreme off-road performance in favor of rapid deployment, automation, and logistical simplicity. Its fully automated loading and firing mechanisms allow crews to operate from within the protected cabin, delivering a salvo of three rounds and relocating within two minutes, a tactical advantage that significantly reduces vulnerability to counter-battery fire. Archers can traverse long distances quickly on roads and require less fuel and maintenance than tracked systems, making them cost-effective and well-suited for southern Sweden and Denmark, where infrastructure allows rapid movement between firing positions. The system's ability to shoot and scoot aligns with modern artillery doctrine, emphasizing speed and unpredictability over brute force, and offers a practical solution in regions where mobility along road networks is more critical than withstanding prolonged artillery duels in extreme terrain. The contrast between these two systems extends beyond technical specifications and battlefield performance to strategic and industrial considerations. Norway and Finland's decision to procure K-9S represents not only a tactical choice but also a deliberate deepening of defense cooperation with South Korea's military-industrial sector. This partnership ensures interoperability and the availability of spare parts and technical support while signaling a commitment to modern, resilient, tracked artillery. Sweden by producing archers domestically through BAE Systems Bofors, maintains its industrial autonomy and strategic independence, reinforcing national defense capabilities while fostering local technological expertise. Denmark, having donated its older Caesar systems to Ukraine, faces choices about whether to align with neighboring Scandinavian partners or pursue an alternative procurement path. These decisions illustrate how artillery selection is intertwined with broader political, economic, and alliance considerations, with procurement choices serving as instruments of strategic alignment as much as battlefield optimization. Operationally, both systems have distinct advantages that reflect the environmental and tactical realities of Northern Europe. The K-9's tracked mobility allows it to operate across Arctic snowfields, frozen forests, and muddy tundra where wheeled vehicles would be immobilized. Its armored protection provides crucial survivability during extended engagements, while the K-10 support vehicle enables rapid resupply and sustained fire rates. This combination of endurance, survivability, and firepower makes the K-9 an indispensable asset for the northernmost regions, where terrain and climate are unforgiving and where prolonged exposure to enemy fire is a genuine threat. In contrast, the Archer system excels in speed and operational flexibility. Its wheeled chassis allows it to quickly traverse roads and coastal corridors, and its automated systems minimize the need for crew exposure during firing. While it lacks the K-9's armor and off-road capability, it can rapidly deliver counter-battery fire and relocate before enemy units can respond, making it highly effective in southern regions where infrastructure supports rapid movement and where engagements are often dictated by speed rather than attrition. The operational trade-offs between these two systems reflect a broader truth about modern artillery, there is no universal solution capable of dominating every battlefield scenario. In Arctic conditions, the endurance and protection of tracked artillery are essential, whereas in regions with well-developed infrastructure, the speed, automation, and logistical efficiency of wheeled artillery are decisive. Northern European military planners have recognized that the optimal solution is likely a hybrid approach, combining K-9S for extreme northern conditions with archers in southern operational theaters. Such a strategy leverages the strengths of each system while mitigating their respective vulnerabilities, ensuring that artillery forces remain effective across the region's diverse geography and climatic extremes. The strategic environment continues to evolve, 
with emerging technologies introducing new challenges and opportunities. Russia's investments in advanced drones, precision-guided munitions, and counter-battery radar systems underscore the need for artillery units to remain survivable and adaptable. In this context, neither K-9 nor Archer is invulnerable. The speed and automation of the Archer may be insufficient if sophisticated surveillance and targeting systems can quickly identify and strike its positions, while the K-9's armor may not fully protect it against modern precision munitions without additional electronic warfare or active protection systems. This evolving threat landscape highlights the importance of flexibility, situational awareness, and integration with broader defensive networks, including air defense, electronic countermeasures, and intelligence support. Logistics and sustainment further complicate the calculus. Maintaining two distinct artillery systems imposes higher costs for training, spare parts, and ammunition management. Decisions about standardization or continued dual-system operation must balance operational effectiveness with fiscal sustainability. Smaller states, in particular, benefit from alignment with allies' procurement choices, enhancing interoperability and ensuring reliable supply chains. In contrast, countries seeking strategic independence, like Sweden, may prioritize domestic production and capability retention over cost efficiency. Ultimately, the mix of tracked and wheeled systems reflects both practical battlefield considerations and broader national security strategies, illustrating how artillery modernization is inseparable from geopolitics, industrial policy, and alliance commitments. The tactical implications of this dual approach are significant. K-9S operating in the north can sustain fire over extended periods, traverse challenging terrain, and endure counter-battery threats, providing a reliable backbone for operations in remote and arctic regions. Archers, meanwhile, deliver unparalleled responsiveness in southern regions, where speed and automation enable rapid strikes, effective counter-battery actions, and quick repositioning along dense road networks. Together, these systems create a complementary framework in which endurance and precision, protection and mobility, coexist to maximize operational flexibility. By leveraging the strengths of both platforms, Northern European armies can tailor their artillery deployments to the specific challenges of each theater, ensuring that forces are prepared for a spectrum of contingencies, from Arctic engagements to coastal defense scenarios along the Baltic Sea. The interplay between technology, geography, and strategy also informs training, doctrine, and operational planning. Crews must be proficient in handling extreme cold, snow, and ice when operating K-9S, while also understanding the rapid maneuver and deployment techniques required for archers. Ammunition management, supply chain operations, and maintenance protocols differ significantly between the two systems, requiring careful coordination and adaptive leadership. These factors underscore that artillery effectiveness is not simply a matter of choosing the right hardware, it depends on holistic integration of equipment, personnel, logistics, and operational planning. Northern European armies have embraced this complexity, recognizing that artillery modernization involves more than procurement, it requires a comprehensive approach to capability development across multiple dimensions of warfare. In practical terms, the mixed fleet approach reflects a mature understanding of warfighting realities. Tracked systems dominate in harsh northern landscapes, where the ability to endure environmental extremes and survive counter-battery fire is essential, while wheeled systems operate effectively in southern theaters, leveraging speed, automation, and infrastructure to deliver decisive firepower. This division of labor ensures that northern Europe can maintain credible, flexible, and survivable artillery capabilities across its diverse geography. In the broader context of NATO and regional defense, it also enables interoperability and coordinated operations, allowing allied forces to capitalize on complementary strengths while minimizing gaps in capability. By embracing both tracks and wheels, 
Northern European armies are building a resilient artillery framework capable of responding to a wide range of threats and operational scenarios. Looking forward, the evolution of artillery in Northern Europe will continue to be shaped by technological innovation, shifting geopolitical dynamics, and lessons learned from ongoing conflicts. The rise of unmanned systems, advanced targeting networks, and precision-guided munitions will demand continual adaptation in both tracked and wheeled platforms, as well as the integration of active protection and electronic warfare capabilities. Procurement strategies will be influenced by industrial partnerships, domestic production priorities, and budgetary constraints, all while balancing the imperatives of national defense and alliance commitments. In this context, Northern Europe's artillery choices are more than a technical debate, they are a reflection of national strategy, industrial policy, and the region's approach to enduring and emerging threats. Ultimately, the decision between tracked and wheeled artillery in Northern Europe is not about identifying a single, best, system. It is about aligning each platform with the specific demands of geography, climate, and strategic context. The K-9 Thunder provides robust endurance, protection, and sustained firepower in Arctic and Tundra regions, while the Archer offers unparalleled speed, automation, and efficiency on roads and within developed infrastructure. By combining these capabilities, northern European nations are creating a balanced artillery force that can respond to the full spectrum of operational challenges. This approach ensures that when the next crisis unfolds, whether in Ukraine, the Arctic, or along the Baltic coastline, their artillery will be capable of firing, surviving, and firing again, providing both deterrence and decisive combat capability. The silent duel between artillery systems, where range, speed, and survivability can determine life or death, will continue to shape the battlefields of the 21st century. Northern Europe's embrace of both tracked and wheeled platforms demonstrates a nuanced understanding that no single system can dominate all operational environments. It reflects a sophisticated approach to military planning, one that recognizes the interplay between technology, geography, and strategy. In combining K-9S, archers, and potentially other artillery systems, the region is not merely modernizing, it is constructing a tailored shield of firepower, calibrated to the realities of terrain, climate, and emerging threats. In the end, the choice between wheels and tracks is less a question of superiority and more a question of fit, which platform aligns with the operational requirements, strategic priorities, and environmental realities of Northern Europe, ensuring that when the next artillery duel erupts, its forces are ready to endure, maneuver, and strike with lethal precision.